The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California, Mr. Garamendi, reserves. The gentleman from California, Mr. McKeon, is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes to my friend and colleague, the distinguished gentleman from New York, Mr. King. The gentleman's recognized. I thank the chairman for uh, yielding. I thank him for his effort in putting together this amendment. And before he leaves the floor, I'd like to commend my friend, Mr. Rengel from New York, for the very vigorous bipartisan speech that he gave here today, because this is what this issue warrants. Chairman McKeon has shown it, and I think all of us have to come together to the extent we can to support the president. Now, I have been critical of the president. I believe that action should have been taken earlier against ISIS, but we can have these debates. That's all in the past. The fact is that ISIS is a real threat to the United States. Uh, as someone who comes from a district that lost over 150 people on 9-11, I never, ever want to go through that again. And I can say right now that ISIS is more powerful than Al-Qaeda was on 9-11. They have more financing, they have more weapons, they have more members, they have more of their fighters who have uh, passports that will enable them to come into the United States. And we know that they are committed to destroying Western civilization. So it's essential that we take action against ISIS and take it quickly and take it emphatically. I believe the president has the constitutional and statutory power to act. But I also think it's important for Congress to work with the president. The president has asked for this power to train uh, moderate Syrians. And now, I'm not certain if that would work. I think it's going to be difficult to vet uh, a sufficient number. It's going to be uh, difficult to find them, to work with them. Having said that, as Commander-in-Chief, the President is entitled, I believe, that is his prerogative, and we should stand with him on that. Because if we, if we can put together an effective fighting force on the ground, that will make our air power all that more effective. But, and it's also important that we try to put together a coalition, and I believe by ca Congress standing together as one, by showing strong support for the President, that will encourage other countries to join with us. They will realize they're in this for real, that we're not just making empty gestures, and it is important for Congress to, to come forward at this time. Now, having said that, I also believe that the President should be more open with the American people and say this is going to be tough, and uh, I believe that there are going to be... Uh, boots on the ground. Now, I don't believe uh, we have to have combat troops per se. This is not going to be easy. This is going to involve uh, a tremendous amount the of effort by the American minute. people. The gentleman is recognized for an additional minute. Oh, I, thank the, I thank the chairman for that. Uh, and so we have to realize that no matter how well a war is planned, no matter how uh, uh, specific our strategy is, the fact is that there's going to be tough days ahead. This is going to be very rough. This is not going to be easy. And we have to condition the American people, prepare them for that, be honest with them. And we, as Republicans, I believe, have an obligation not just to be critical, but to stand with the president if we believe overall that ISIS has to be stopped and that we have to support our commander-in-chief in doing that. So what happened in the past is in the past. I don't want the past to be prologue, but we can work constructively and positively and to make sure that the job gets done because too many lives are dependent on it. And I'm not in this for Iraq. I'm not in this for Afghanistan. Yes, that's important, but I'm in this for the people of the United States, people who never, ever should be attacked again, and our forces overseas who are in harm's way. That is our main obligation, and that is who I am voting for today when I vote for the Chairman's Amendment. And again, I thank him for the outstanding job he's done, and since this may be my last time, I'd also commend him for the great job he's done as Chairman over the last several years. With that, I yield back, and I urge a yes vote. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from California, Mr. McKeon, reserves. The gentleman from California, Mr. Garamendi, uh, is recognized. 